What's up Internet, IG here again, and today we're going to be having a quick look at Android 4.0, both on the Samsung Galaxy S2 and the Acer Iconia Tab A500 that I've talked about in the past. And so finally, here we go, we're going to have a look at Android 4.0 now that 4.1 is out. Okay, so Android 4.0 was uh, quite a major milestone in the Android release. It brought quite a number of features and improvements to the Android operating system and it really matured uh, the platform of Android into a, a very nice, a very clean interface. It really cleaned up a lot of the, the mess that, uh, that Android had become in the 2.x series. But at the same time, it also amalgamated both the phone OS and the tablet OS into one platform so that then developers could then uh, tinker either the tablet layout or the phone layout depending on what they wanted to do. So we're just going to be having a look at Android 4.0 as an overall OS. I'm not going to dive into all of the individual features and improvements that were made with Android 4.0 because let's face it, most of the phones coming out now are running Android 4.0 and they will probably be running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean in the near future. But Ice Cream Sandwich has been rolled out on most devices now at least most uh, popular devices uh, like the Galaxy S2. And also I wanted to have a look at the tablet because uh, obviously I have the Acer Iconia there as well. So let's have a look, shall we? All right, so this is the Galaxy S2. Uh, specifically, it's actually the T version of the Galaxy S2, which here in Australia, that basically means the one that's optimized for Telstra and Vodafone. Uh, I'm I am running it on Optus, but that's really irrelevant for all the international viewers and those in the States. Now, uh, essentially, the Galaxy S2, the default over-the-air update that most people, most users would have received, uh, gives, the, uh, gives the Galaxy S2 the... Uh, the Samsung branded version of Ice Cream Sandwich, which does look quite a bit different from the defaults. So what I actually tried to do is uh, actually restore a lot of the original features that uh, and launcher and apps etc that come with the uh, default Ice Cream Sandwich uh, experience. Ice Cream Sandwich introduced a launcher down on the bottom bar here. So you can see here on the uh, on the panel here, you can open up the menus and scroll through them, uh, scroll through the apps that you have installed, and uh, and also they've combined the widget home screens here as well. So this is where you access you would uh, access all your widgets and throw them onto your home screen, uh, depending on what you want to do. Also, the camera app did go through quite a makeover as well, which was well worth it uh, because the camera app for the Android 2.x series wasn't the best in the world and so it was great to see that they revamped that and uh, added a few cool features in there as well. Again, by default you do not get this on the Galaxy S2. You do however receive, you can however receive this functionality through buying the, uh, either buying the camera ICS app in the marketplace or the Google Play Store or you can also uh, just download the free version and it just comes with a few limitations of course. But you can see here within the handset mode you've got the classic home screen uh, where, where you can throw on widgets and apps and obviously you can customize the home screens as well as have uh, as well as customizing what you put down here on the bottom launcher uh, so that's very helpful indeed and obviously the theme that came with uh, Android 4.0 is also much appreciated in that it, it, it has a much more cleaner and simpler design to it than what uh, than what the Android 2.x series had. Now notice I'm referring to the 2.x series when it comes to the handsets because Android 2.x was designed for the handset whereas 3.0 was for the tablet. Uh, and then of course, like I said, uh, Android 4.0 came along and amalgamated the two. When it comes to loading your gallery images, uh, it's also a lot faster than what it used to be in the past. So that's good to see as well. There's a lot of smooth scrolling there uh, and you can really open up images and, uh, and folders quite quickly. And the thumbnails load very quickly as well, which is nice. The integration with uh, social networking services isn't quite as good as I first remember with uh, with some of the earlier Android experiences. For example, if you want to share a particular image, you can tap and hold, and then you get the more options here. Uh, then you can usually do some basic editing here, but then there's also send via. There's Wi-Fi Direct, which is built in, and it's similar to Mac OS X's AirDrop in that you can just dump it to any, uh, any device that has the same features enabled. Uh, but you can also share via. Now, once upon a time, uh, it would depend on how many social networking apps you had installed as to how many options would show up here. Unfortunately, while I do have an app for nearly every social network there is installed on this phone, it's only coming up with the Google Picasa and All Share, which is a little bit disappointing. Also, the default Gmail app went through quite a bit of work as well, and it's very nice, very fluid now that you can actually manage multiple folders and, uh, and mark multiple events at the same time, and it'll also show up in the threaded view 
It's similar to what it was, but it's just a much cleaner interface now. And of course, it's very, very quick to synchronize your emails. Also, it's worth mentioning that since Google had their big IO conference, the, uh, the Google apps such as Google Plus and YouTube have also undergone some great work in recent times. Uh, the, the Google Plus app in particular has become quite a nice application. It, it kicks Facebook out of the park when it comes to just how nice and, and, uh, and fluid this application works. Uh, again, this is going to be something that's really been showcased in Jelly Bean. Um, but the design, I really like the design of where Google are going with their, with their applications. And then of course the same goes for YouTube, which obviously I would spend a fair bit of time on uh, being the sort of person that I am. The other thing that really impressed me with Google Android's 4.0 release uh, was the voice search and, uh, and overall system search uh, that you get up here in the top for every single launcher. And then obviously that's been improved further with Jelly Bean 4.1. Obviously, it's too hard to have a look at really detailed as to what this uh, as to what this Android release can offer. So definitely, if you have any questions about it uh, and you're not running Android 4.0, then leave me a comment down below, and I'm sure uh, either myself or anybody else of the viewers will be happy to answer your questions. So let's just have a look now at the release on a tablet and see how that looks. All right, so this is the Acer Iconia Tab A500 with a bit of a case strapped on it as well. Uh, so while I wasn't that uh, excited to have Android 4.0 on the Galaxy S2, simply because the Galaxy S2 was already quite a nice performing device uh, before it got the update, whereas I was very excited when the 4.0 release uh, for the Acer Iconia Tab came along, because honestly this device was getting a bit sluggish. Uh, so consequently, when the ice cream sandwich release rolled out for this tablet, I was very, very happy indeed. And, uh, and it's really taken this device to the next level as far as uh, its usability and its responsiveness is concerned. Now, one of the other things that I didn't mention with the Galaxy S2 that, uh, that is actually supposed to be on all Android 4.0 operating systems is one of these features here from the straight from the lock screen, you have access to either unlock or to the camera. Now, most ice cream sandwich devices are going to have this by default, but of course, this all depends on the ca uh, on the phone's manufacturer uh, because that some are going to customize this device to uh, to their needs. And so they might be taking that feature out like they did with the Galaxy S2. So consequently, when we unlock, we again, we have the home screen with the scrolling sideways, much like Honeycomb. Uh, and the layout is very similar to Honeycomb as well. We have the integrated buttons down here in the bottom left hand corner. And then of course you have the system notifications here. Now, one of the other things that I do really like about, uh, about Android 4.0 is the customizing, uh, customization abilities of the notification center down the bottom here. Because what you can actually do is uh, nowadays when you get a notification, you end up having a whole long list of notifications that clog up your, uh, that clog up your space. So what you can do now is you can actually just swipe to get rid of them and uh, and it will dispose of those notifications so they don't keep bugging you. So for instance, if you always have an inbox, uh, email inbox that seems to be always full and you don't really wanna be checking it that often, then you can just simply swipe away those notifications that are bugging you and move on. The other thing that I really like about uh, the ice cream sandwich default launcher is the fact that you can actually group apps together now inside baskets. Uh, so this is really helpful, of course. Obviously, iOS had this feature as well. Uh, now you can throw stuff together in a basket. And uh, and one thing that I do really appreciate is that the baskets are quite speedy indeed. Now, again, the same basic anatomy of Honeycomb uh, th uh, 3.0 releases here as well. So you have the Google Universal Search with the voice search there in the top left. And in the top right, you have the Applications button. The Applications button is a little bit obscure and a little bit small for the new user. Um, but I imagine once you see it once, you'll be fine. And again, we have the exact same launcher style here as what you saw on the handset version. So we have applications galore, obviously, because I do use this tablet quite a bit. And then again, you've got your widgets there customized uh, and you can use different sizes uh, and different levels to fit whatever needs you might have. And again, as far as the tablet apps are concerned that come with Ice Cream Sandwich, the same sort of improvements have been made. The Gmail app is now much cleaner and smoother. And I shall put this down so you don't all get seasick. And of course, the other thing that I really like now is that Google Plus does actually look like a decent tablet experience as well. They have tiles that will uh, that load automatically as you pull them along. So that's very nice indeed. It looks much better suited now to the tablet than what it ever did look before. So kudos on Google for fixing that issue. Of course, maps and navigation work much the same as they always have, which is usually pretty well. And then of course, we do have Google movies and trailers as well. Uh, now again, this all depends on your network connectivity, which at the moment is not that excellent. You've also got your uh, music, your Google Play Music, and your Play Books, which uh, they're really pushing the, uh, the their content store here because honestly, uh, Google's got a little bit of catch up to do when it comes to the quite immense catalog that uh, Amazon have. 
but at the same time, I've been quite impressed with the content that Google provides and, uh, and especially with the integration that it has with Android now, especially even more with Jelly Bean and the Nexus 7. Uh, I'll be interested to see where this goes in the future because really they're, they're starting to mature as a, as a marketplace and as a platform. And I think with the right hardware, Android really has the ability to compete with, the, with at least the cool image that, uh, that Apple seemed to put out. Now, one thing that I can't figure out for the life of me is how to get a translucent launcher here. So you, you could actually get a bit of a picture coming through instead of just black. So if anybody knows the answer to that question, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Something that I was very impressed with with uh, the Android 4.0 release on this tablet was it really enabled true 1080p playback of, uh, of videos. Before this, uh, before before the 4.0 release, it wasn't really up, this tablet wasn't really able to uh, play from uh, 1080p video. Whereas now, it's actually able to play it back very smoothly indeed. And you can see here that this is a full 1080p video uh, that's playing back with the default uh, Android video player. So it's very nice indeed. Uh, and it's great, and it's been a great performance boost, I reckon, to the uh, capabilities of this tablet, especially from my point of view, as one who enjoys watching the movie here and there. Task management, task, task switching is also very convenient now as well. Uh, you've now, instead of having a list of applications that is defined, that is limited to three or four, you now have a scrollable list of apps that you can open and close uh, at your discretion. And again, the same concept works here as with the notifications, simply swipe to get rid of the ones that you don't want. Now, the only other thing that I'd like to mention before we finish up here with this look at Android 4.0 is the PC connectability, especially on the Linux side of things. Because let's face it, there's, it's been a bit of a hit and miss with Android connectivity over the releases of Android that they've put out. Your best chances of success are to uh, set your PC connectivity to MTP or the uh, Media Transfer Protocol. But again, it's gonna vary on the device and what support that device has from the manufacturer as far as drivers are concerned. Usually the MTP is fairly universal, so that's what you'll probably have the best chances of connecting to your PC with. But again, if you're having issues, then XDA Developers is the site to look for uh, because they will be able to help you out with, uh, with connecting to your computer because I know they certainly did that for me. So I think I'm definitely gonna make a bit, of a bit more of a regular habit to have a look at some Android apps that I appreciate. So definitely if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below and I'll start compiling a list that we can look at as a channel. So I realized that was quite a long video indeed, and I hope you enjoyed it. So definitely leave me some comments down below if you want me to have a look at a particular Android uh, application, we'll definitely put it on the list. Of course, there's quite a few rumblings in the Linux Mint world at the moment as we have the XFCE and the KDE release coming along. So let me know which one of those you'd like to see me review. And once again, thank you for putting up with this very long video and liking and subscribing and doing whatever it is that you like to do when you like this sort of content. I shall see you in the very near future with another distro review. And with that, I shall say peace out, ladies and gentlemen.